background is really farming. I'm the eighth generation farmer on our family farm um, um, in the parish of Ardfield, just outside Clannacilty. We've been there for 300 years, so um, I think we're well rooted in the um, in the local um, local soil at this stage. Um, I've been, um, I suppose, um, farming all my life, but. Um, I also spent about 15 years traveling for business and um, in other businesses throughout the world and um, just got a little bit tired of living my life in airplanes and airports and um, started to look out for something um, that we could, uh, started to look out for a business that that we were, uh, that, that, that I could work from home without doing too much traveling and at the same time to showcase the, the fabulous um, soil and um, maritime environment that we have in our locality which is something special and unique. And being a farmer I think that um, that working with, with food elements and, um, and barley and whiskey is a very natural progression. I think we all, I always wanted to do something which would showcase the very best of what we could produce and grow on our own farm and um, I, many years ago as a young man I did look at uh, farmhouse cheese production and, um, and, and, and dairy products um, and for one reason or another that, that never went ahead but, um, but I came back and I still wanted to do something that would showcase the best of the dairy products and the, and the grain that we grow, that grew on our farm. So I um, originally started working with UCC to develop um, a few different drinks um, based from our milk and they never really came to anything but as I did go through the process I began to realise the opportunities of the whisky industry and, um, and how it could actually work so well in with the ethos that we wanted to show to the world and, um, and from there it really just, uh, just grew and the fact that we grow our own grain for our whisky in the, uh, right, right on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean um, is something special for us and we're actually really excited from brought in agronomic and the whiskey point of view to see what the end results will be on that. We're out on the peninsula um, right under the Galley Head Lighthouse and um, it's actually really good farmland there which you wouldn't expect on a peninsula but the, the soil is up to two metres deep in places. It's really sandy soil, uh, very productive, um, really good for growing grain and um, because it's literally right next to the Atlantic Ocean where we've had centuries of, of salt spray um, Blowing on that, blowing on that soil, and working it way right through into the into the into the, into the, the heart of that soil, um, it's going to be the, that 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 I expect will make a difference and, and will uh, work through into the flavour of the whiskey at the end of the day. It becomes quite challenging in the autumn time if you do get um, bad weather um, towards harvest period, which generally for us might be the third or fourth week of August. So if you do get a, if you do get bad weather, and it, and it stretches into mid September, then you get these um, these really strong winds, which causes the crop to lodge, and then we have to go to our scarecrows to stop the crows from feeding on our precious barley and all the other challenges. But um, so far, thankfully, we've managed to, um, to 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 harvest every crop. As I started looking at the business plan, I realised that the whole tourist side of thing was very important to the business plan in order to provide us with cash flow for the first three, four, five years while we're waiting for our whiskey to properly mature. Obviously, being in the local town made a lot more sense um, to attract visitors than, um, than being um, well outside the town on the family farm. So, um, the distillery itself is in a, for, a former bank. It was meant to be an Ulster bank. And um, it's located right in the centre of Tanakilty on the N71, which is highly visible on the Wild Atlantic Way. So um, I think, or I would certainly hope that um, over the next three or four years, this will become an iconic tourist attraction for the people of West Cork and County Cork. Uh, we, we've, we've, uh, we've got absolutely fabulous um, reaction from the local community. They've been fully supportive, fully behind the whole project from day one. And, um, and we see this as being um, a, a big um, a big boost to the town of Clannacilty as well, and uh, which is which is badly needed form of diversification for um, for a rural town in Ireland. And while 
Point Clannacilty is a great food town and, and, and a great tourist town. I think every extra business really does help make a difference. We've got about 40 employees here at the moment. Um, that would include visitor tour guides and it would include staff in our restaurant, which is uh, part of the whole complex. And we're pretty well close to uh, maximum employment here in Clannacilty at this point in time. Of course, as the brand grows, as we, we spread on into um, other markets in Europe and in the US, then, um, then obviously the, the number of employment numbers will be going up um, in those markets pretty rapidly, we would hope. Our primary market is our home market because our home market is the market we want to be known in and respected in and recognised in. Um, and I think if you cannot own that, you cannot claim to go on to, um, to become a serious brand in other parts of the world. We've been in New York and Florida for the last 12 months and we've recently expanded into five other states. We would hope to be in Canada and, the, and about 12 US states uh, by the end of 2019. Um, in Europe, we're already in about seven markets and in active discussions and another two or three more to, um, to expand our footprint there. We've doubled our global footprint over the last, the last 10 years and, and the indications are that we'll double again over the next 10 years. Kilty Distillery's contribution to that is going to be tiny in the overall scale of things, but I think that we can make a difference and we can, we can be, um, we, can, we, we certainly intend to be a player and we intend to be a, a serious player in, in probably a niche space within those markets. in Cork. Uh, just moved back uh, about a year ago. Actually bought a house uh, 31 doors to the left of where uh, I'd grown up. Yeah, it's, it's good to be back home. Right. I'd always been interested in whiskey. Uh, my grandfather had worked at uh, Cork Distillers back in the 80s. So we would have always had you know, whiskey about the house. And I remember uh, what caught me a lot when I was young was the burning of the, the pudding at Christmas and lighting the whiskey on fire. Um, I went to college in UCC and did a uh, microbiology. Um, after I finished, uh, I started working in pharmaceuticals. I had planned on going to do uh, the Master Brewer course in Edinburgh straight away, but uh, an opportunity came up to do some traveling. So I spent three months in Japan, uh, a year then in Australia working in a, a vineyard. Okay. Uh, I came back to Ireland, which would have been 2010, so the recession had kind of really taken hold uh, and it was kind of hard to get a job, so I fell back into what was available, which was still pharmaceuticals. I spent another two years working there and I remember just working there and I spent 13 months working on a project that uh, at the end of it I made this tiny drum of white powder, about 10 kilos. As I hope, if I'm lucky, I'll never see this powder again, no interest in it. So I thought back to my original plan of I wanted to be a brewer and distiller. So I packed it in, moved to Edinburgh, did the master brewer distiller in Harriet Watt uh, for the year. I was lucky enough to get a job as a brewer in uh, CNC in Clamel. Uh, eventually spent about a year and a half there, a uh, position came up in Teeling Whiskey Company for a distiller. I applied and I was lucky enough to get it. Stayed there for about two and a half years. Uh, I saw that uh, distillery was opening up in Clannacilty, so they threw my hat in the ring and uh, yeah, it all worked out. The more whiskey out there, the better, as far as I'm concerned, because there'll be more variety in the category, different styles, uh, plenty of room for innovation as well in the category. What I really like about Clannacilty Distillery is the fact that we grow our own uh, barley here and we're not going to be focused on like, the yield of alcohol, we're going to be squeezing out. If we get a good yield out of it, that's a byproduct, but uh, flavour is going to be our main target here. So I originally started as microbiology, so I'm going to have a try and experiment a lot with yeast in, in the coming years at the moment now. Just 
just after commissioning the plant, so we're concentrating on just getting some spirit into wood. But as soon as we have the, the brewing and distillation process nailed down, I think we'll experiment more with things, yeah, like yeast and grains. Yeah. The double distill kind of focuses a lot of the grain, but when you triple distill, it really concentrates the fruity flavors and esters, which are from the yeasts. Right. So yeah, I definitely think there's a lot of room there to play with different yeasts, maybe isolate some local yeasts, maybe for some insects or bees. Uh, there's definitely a lot of room there. Well, we always try and use as much local uh, produce as we can. So uh, we get all our grain from Malta Company of Ireland and our own raw barley. Uh, even in the restaurant in the Wales Tale, the coffee is local company, roast the beans. I know Clannacilty is a, a big foodie town. So uh, in addition of a distillery to the town will only enhance the food profile of the, the town. Uh, we've had quite a lot of issues uh, just from leaks pumps, getting the steam uh, boiler running correctly. Uh, as a scientist, uh, I started in science, it's, it's amazing how quickly some of that can go out the window when uh, the practicalities of production uh, dawn on you. Your levels of free amino nitrogen in your wort suddenly seem inconsequential because your pot ale pump is spewing uh, burning liquid everywhere out in the yard. Uh, but I think uh, you know, every day we produce another batch, we're ironing out all these little issues. Um, soon we'll be able to focus more on the science again. So the, our flagship is our Clonacilty uh, single batch. It is a mix of 11-year-old uh, malt and 9-year-old grain whiskey. Uh, which we finish 80% uh, in Virgin American Oak and 20% in uh, Virgin European Oak. Um, we have a port cast finish, which is, again is the blend of 11 year old malt, 9 year old grain, except this, instead of finishing it in the Virgin American Oaks, we put it into port casks for about 3 to 9 months. Okay. And the single grain, of course, is uh, 100% grain whiskey, and we finish it in uh, Bordeaux red wine casks. I think the flavours will change quite a, quite a bit, uh, but as long as I'm consistently producing something that is of a high quality, that's fine by me. We will be bringing out quite an old whiskey in the future. Um, we'll also be experimenting with our own uh, new make. With we're currently on 50-50 pot still, but we will be going to try and experiment with as many different grains as I can get my hands on, really. At the moment, I spend you know, eight hours a day just on the production side, just making sure we're getting the whiskey out the door and splitting my time between going up to the warehouse and blending. Um, in the future, when the distillery is running 100%, I see myself a lot more in the, the craft side of the business. So I'd say the distillery is where a lot of the science is and the, the warehouse is where more of the craft, the blending, the selection of wood. So I do hope to be spending a lot more time up there. Once. I think it's maybe a little early to see the coastal influence on it, but I'm telling you when you're standing up there in winter, the wind is going through that warehouse so fast and the spray from the ocean is hitting you in the face. So I think there'll definitely be some sort of uh, influence from the coast. Even the water, we will be casking the water and uh, diluting the new make into the cask has kind of a salinity to it. You can yeah. really taste the sea inside. Uh, yeah, so we try and bring it down uh, as slowly as possible. Uh, we call it our gentle cut. So I would say like, the minimum time we take to, to cut a whiskey is about two weeks. Okay. If you do uh, drop the alcohol level too fast and say the temperature of the well water can be quite cold, a lot of the fatty acids will come out of solution uh, and you'll throw a haze. Uh, we bottle it 43.6% so it would dissolve again. But these um, 
fatty acids can saponify in, in the meantime and give you kind of a, a buttery, soapy flavour. So by diluting quite slowly, we hope to keep all these in solution. We try and filter quite coarsely here, so uh, where a lot of uh, distilleries would go down to 5 microns, our, um, our filters are 30 microns. I always said that, you know, if I was doing something I really cared about every day, it would never be like having a job at all. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the times that's true, but definitely not all the time. Yeah. Um, to get into the industry, uh, I would hope that maybe there could become an apprenticeship for distilling. Or else just go to uh, one of the universities and learn.